Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend, and I choose peace today. I am blessed to live in Canada, a nation that has not seen war on its soil for hundreds of years. There's no famine or plague or pestilence anywhere close to me. Although times have changed since I wrote this, I still have some freedoms to speak my thoughts and practice my faith, but those are becoming a little bit tighter and tighter, the restrictions put against us by the Canadian government. But as a woman, there are no restrictions of where I can walk and what I can wear. I live in a high rise in a relatively safe neighborhood. I have access to great health care and an abundance of nourishing food. As I have witnessed third world poverty firsthand, I know that I am extremely blessed and I give thanks to the Lord for his mercy over me. But to my shame, even in the middle of this incredible security God has provided me, I slip into the turmoil of anxious thoughts all too easily. My mind races to the what if of an unknown future as a single woman who lives on a disability pension. What if I end up forgotten in a state-run nursing home? What if I fall at home? What if I lose my income? What if? What if? I worry when loved ones are pulled deeper into addictions, mental illnesses, and spirit-breaking debt. When I scan the headlines and read of wars and rumors of wars, Matthew 24, verse 6, my imagination always paints the worst-case scenario. I wrote this several years ago, as I said, but how true is this? I wonder how soon the trickles of opposition, North American Christians presently experience will become rushing rivers of prosecution. Yes, if I allow these thoughts a free reign in my mind, they will take me to anywhere but peaceful waters. The world's definition of peace is this. The absence of wars or other hostilities, an agreement or treaty to end hostilities, freedom from quarrels and disagreement, harmonious relations, and public security and order. But the peace that God gives is not dependent on my outer circumstances. His peace does not leave when the world storms against me. God's peace doesn't need everyone around me to be in perfect agreement with me. God's peace doesn't depend on everyone liking me. If anything, God's supply of peace increases exponentially during times of adversity. However, if I am to draw on his great supply, I must allow his peace to rule. I can only do so by removing fear and anxiety from the throne of my heart. I have to kick fear and anxiety to the curb. I must leave the what ifs of tomorrow in his peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled neither let them be afraid. Let's replace the word let with the word allow. Allow not your hearts to be troubled, neither allow them to be afraid. God leaves the decision to me. I can choose to dwell in his peace or I can choose to dwell in my anxiety. The peace and assurance that accompanied the martyrs of old as they walked towards their martyrdom 
is the same peace and assurance that he offers me today. I'm not a name it and claim it sort of gal by any stretch of the imagination. However, I do understand the power of the tongue. When you are overwhelmed by anxiety and fear, don't give them permission to try to overwhelm you. You can kick those suckers to the curb by allowing the peace of God to rule in your heart. I know there's many who are watching this right now who I've started to get to know, and I know your stories. Believe me, I've gone through some pretty horrific things too, but I have learned this one thing. Peace will never come to our hearts if we wait for our external circumstances to fall into alignment. Peace must come from the inside out. I love you and I am asking Holy Spirit to come to you now and to give you the courage and strength to start kicking anxiety and fear out of your life. Serve them their eviction papers. They've been trying to take over your inner household all too long.